Does all of that $6,500 for an uh, open enrollment student come from the state, or does it come partially from the state and partially from the school district that the student left? It comes in, it's, it's aid that's withheld from the home school district that is paid to the non-resident, to the district that they're going to. The state controls the funding of the full 6,500. Yes. Yes, they automatically withhold aid from one district and give it to the other district. And that is done in July. And so we're saying that if a student comes to the Spooner School District, the overall average cost for students in the Spooner School District is probably around $10,000. That includes things like busing, special ed, everything that we do for the kids is about $10,000. Um, if a student goes from Spooner to another district, they get $6,500 of that. We still have $3,500. Now, the, the aid that you're talking about is a different, that's just the way the state pays it. They don't trust me to send somebody else a check for $6,500, and they say, we'll take care of that ourselves because we don't trust you to actually send them the money. Now, you know, when I talk about average cost per pupil is around $10,000, that includes a lot more. See, if a student open enrolls to another district, there's no transportation involved. If there are special education costs, they can charge us more for those too. If one of our students open enrolls to another district and there are extra special education costs involved, they can charge us back for extra costs and things like that too. But, but I wanted to get back to the, I had my mind on something while you were talking about funding. Um, I talk about some different funds sometimes. And generally here I'm talking about the general fund. It's called Fund 10 in our fund economy. There are, there are a bunch of different funds and sometimes money can be spent from one into the other and sometimes it can't. Um, we can use general fund money to supplement just about any other fund, can't we Mike? But we cannot necessarily use some of that segregated fund money to help out with our general fund costs. Um, and like I explained with the building one, all I can use building fund money for is building funds. All I can use um, our flow through special education money for is special education stuff. We have a community education fund. All we can use that for is community education projects. We cannot use that for general fund purposes. So I can't cross the money. Yes, sir. If this passes, it would be an increase of about $43 per 100000 If it fails, it's a decrease of $98. If the referendum had saved them for $1.6 million, would taxes stay the same? They would stay pretty flat. Depending on the valuation. Yes. Yeah, depending on what happens with your individual valuation would have stayed pretty flat. Um, and we would have, and we would be cutting out some things. Yes, ma'am. So is that something that you guys are considering? Maybe decreasing and asking for less and just cutting out some of the programs? I mean, why is it an all or nothing? Two point, you know, whatever million, or all these cuts that you guys are talking about? Well, I'll have a chance to see if we work with that. Um, the, the citizens that came came in asked, you know, what's it going to take to keep the programs where they are, and so that's where Mike and I took a look at what programs we have, 
we can make some decreases. We have been, and we can continue to make some decreases. But if we're going to keep the programs that we have, as we have them, it would be about $2.35 million per year. <coughs> Do you have well, that's certainly a possibility. What we came up, the way we came up with this referendum is to, like Don said, maintain what we have. And if it fails, then we have to rethink it and do something else. But we, we do have a problem that we have to cure here. You know, Don has mentioned that we've cut like $3 million, I believe, over 10 years. Those are real cuts. They're not like the government figures them, like they, they'll cut part of the increase and call that a cut. I mean, ours are real cuts, and we've always done it that way. And uh, it's, the other districts are going to be in the same boat we are in a short time. We talked a bunch of them down in Madison or Milwaukee last week, and uh, we seem to be leading the pack and up here, but this is what we need to maintain what we have for the next few years. Hi, hey, um, Robert Holland, I have two kids in the system. Um, I have a question about the referendums. Um, one of them is, I guess it's a question or a comment, it would have been nice if you could have had a backup plan on this referendum because it's it is kind of an all or nothing. It's 2.3 or, or, or we revert back to nothing. I think you should have just said 2.3 or why don't you just hold it at 1.6 and extend that for four more years. At least it gives the public an, an option because the economy is tight. It, all, it always appears as though there are never any cuts in labor costs with the um, school system. And after having been through the high school referendum, to be hit with 1.6 right after the high school and then 2.3 with no rest, I think a backup plan would have been appropriate and equitable to present at the same time that you're presenting the 2.3 referendum. So that would be one of my comments. The other comment would be, I think if you would have crafted the high school referendum, um, a little bit different, any excess could have been spent on operations if you did a good job in getting a bid. And rather, what you have is a system, system that's tying your hands. You've got this referendum for the high school, 35 million, whatever it was, and we need, it, we need the excess. You did a good job. You came in under budget, and we go, well, why can't you take that and spend it on operations? And you say that you can't. But if the referendum would have been crafted in such a way to say, but if there's any savings, it would be better to spend it on needed operations rather than a roof that we don't need just because we have it, just because we have the extra money, or something else that we really don't need as compared to operations which are very serious and very important right now. So I think it's a misallocation of funds. I think you could have crafted it in a much better way. And um, that is my comment. Thank you. <laughs>